singing Isaiah chapter number 11. Isaiah 11 tonight. <clears throat> Talk about, just a little bit, the glorious rest. The glorious rest. Isaiah chapter number 11. Look at verse number 10 as we get started tonight. The Bible says, In that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. All God's people said amen. amen. Let's be seated. We'll bow to pray. Father, thank you for the rest that is promised, and it's been fulfilled in this chapter. Thank you for the rest for our soul, that when we take your yoke upon us, I pray that we would... Um, Lord, be, uh, have the, uh, the ingredients and, Lord, the um, intention and uh, the importance of seeking after your rest. God, thank you for the souls that heard about Jesus this week. I know that you're the one who writes names in the book of life. We're the ones that just tell about what you wrote in the Bible. And so I pray that those two things would come together. <clears throat> Lord, be with those around the building that are serving with uh, younger ones and ask that you give us good fellowship tonight as we um, come together in your house. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> the rest shall be glorious. It talks about the Gentiles seeking. Interesting, Isaiah is a prophet to Israel, and probably, uh, as, as Yatende talked about, being a mis missionaries and being totally different from the place they go to, and, and people looking uh, the different color of skin and the different uh, ways and, 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 and things, characteristics we have, uh, Isaiah's message to the Jews, they're probably thinking, what are you talking about Gentiles for, right? What, what, what's that have to do with anything uh, that they are concerned with? In this book of, or in the chapter of 11 of Isaiah, it goes on to um, uh, speak of the root of Jesse in the beginning, which would be Jesus Christ, as uh, a branch would come forth, a rod out of Jesse. It's called a, a root there in verse number 10, <clears throat> the rod and the root. And then it goes on in, in the earlier verses to talk about the peace that will be on the earth of the millennial kingdom. Isaiah chapter 11 covers from the birth of Christ all the way to the reign of Christ. Um, some 3,000 years in human history, that's all prophetic in future when it was written down 700 years before the birth of Christ. It's an amazing chapter to cover that much history that hadn't even happened yet. As you get down to verse number 10... Our verse, it talks about this glorious rest. And I am telling you, I, I fully believe that the rest that the Gentiles seek is in the ensign of the people. An ensign is like an emblem. It's exactly what it is. I preach from behind one. Every time I get up to preach, you're looking at an emblem that I hope that you see instead of just me. Now, uh, 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 the voice that comes from behind the pulpit hopefully is hid behind the cross. Amen. But the cross is our emblem. It's a, a, the emblem of suffering and shame, the old rugged cross song says. And it's what I sought after where I could find forgiveness for my sin. It was so neat after uh, the young couple prayed uh, in the back of the church this morning after service. And I said, can I show you a verse so you'll know now that God's going to keep his word. It's not about how confident you are. It's about how conscious God is of his word. And we went to Titus 1-2 where it says, In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie, promised before the world began. And I said, if God can't lie, and he, said you, he told you, if you call on the Lord, you shall be saved. What do you think that means? She said, can I get a hug? Can I get a hug? And I said, yes, you can. Uh, as long as her husband's right there, amen. But, uh, and, and, and the reason being, the confidence, courage. There is something to hold on to, and we have emblems uh, that, that represent things that, that we are associated with. And the Bible says, in that day when this root of Jesse, when the rod of Jesse comes and, and says, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. Amazing that Jesus would be who we're drawn to and who we seek after. And when you come to Jesus, he said, you'll find rest for your souls. Jesus was fulfilling Isaiah chapter 11 in Matthew chapter 11. 
When he said, come unto me, all you that labor, and offer that rest, he's literally fulfilling Isaiah chapter 11, what was promised and prophesied that would happen when the ensign of the emblem comes. And so there's a rest. Now, <clears throat> we're not just looking for a temporary rest, although I believe that there is a Canaan land rest when you get to where God wants you to be. You can rest being in the center of God's will. And if you found that for your life, you'll know what I mean when you're just where you ought to be in life. There's no better way to explain that. I, I know a lot of people, it doesn't matter what age you are, have said, Preacher, I just don't know what I'm supposed to do. When you find it, you'll find that rest. You'll find that rest where you're like, now I'm in it. Now I'm where I, I and that can change from time to time as God moves us around. But um, if you seek after that, you're going to find it. And, and, and it's a glorious rest. It's a, it's a purposeful rest. Uh, just a couple times that God has moved me in my life, I was uneasy until I got to where he wanted me to be. Then, then there, was, there was no question of where I should be or what I should be doing uh, because you're in that, that, that Canaan land, promise, purpose land rest. But there is a rest beyond the, the grave that uh, we talk about <clears throat> rest in peace when people die, but no, we're, we're going to be alive in heaven when we die. Amen? And resting from the labors and the burdens. But the Bible talks about this rest in Isaiah 11:10, The rest that the Gentiles would seek. Verse number 11 says this. Look at the restoration. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set His hand again the second time to recover the remnant of His people, which shall be left from Assyria, Egypt, Pathros, Cush, Elam, Shinar, Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. This restoration of Israel. Notice it could not happen before Jesus would be on the scene. Before the root of Jesse would come, the rest cannot come. And there was some restoration of the Jews from Babylon back to Jerusalem. There was some uh, uh, rebuilding of the temple in Zechariah and Ezra's day. But Jesus wasn't there yet. The root of Jesse hadn't come on the scene. When you talk about Jesus, the Israelites haven't been restored since Jesus was here. In fact, they were dispersed since Jesus was here. These verses cannot be fulfilled prior to Jesus because they, they weren't uh, and practically in place to be fulfilled until after He'd come the first time. I believe that some of these uh, prophetic verses in Isaiah are talking about when the Lord would reign with righteousness <clears throat> and when He would um, uh, uh, fulfill the messianic promises of the millennial kingdom. But if you notice back in Isaiah 11, verse 2, watch what the Bible says. Verse 1, There shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall, what's it say? Rest upon him. Remember when Jesus was baptized and the Spirit of God like a dove came and rested upon him? <laughs> that, that, that's what you're seeing being fulfilled. Jesus is the one that the Spirit of the Lord rests upon and the description in Isaiah 11 verse number 2 would fulfill our Lord. Make him of quick understanding, oh, I'm sorry, wisdom, understanding, the spirit of counsel, might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord shall make him of quick understanding and the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove the equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. What you see in that verse is the first and second coming of Jesus Christ. Remember when Jesus came the first time, he wasn't slaying anybody with his mouth and with his sword or with the, the, uh, uh, the word that he had. But in Revelation 19 it says, One shall come down riding a white horse, and out of his mouth a sharp two-edged sword, with which he will smite the nations. Yeah. Literally, the return of Christ is mentioned in Isaiah 11, as well as the first coming of Christ. It, yes, he had to come, he's a root of Jesse, he's born from the family of Jesse, but friend, when he comes back to slay the wicked, He's coming back as King of kings and Lord of lords. He's not coming as a baby. He's coming as a mighty warrior to carry out uh, the wrath of God. 
Revelation 19, you can look that up. Not for tonight, for a time, but just make a mention of it. The restoration. Then go back to verse 12 and 11 and watch this. The reuniting. <clears throat> the rest is glorious. The restoration is promised. In verse number 12, He shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcast of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Amazing to me, and I, this is just my opinion, I can be wrong, but before Israel was gathered back to the land, there was an ensign of the nations that dictated the first declaration was to give Palestine to these Jews, and that was the declaration of the United Nations. An ensign for the nations. And you look up and you'll see a, a little uh, circular uh, a map of the globe, the United Nations emblem, that all of them are together. But the first decree was give Palestine back to the Jews. That, that League of Nations or United Nations was born out of the conflicts of World War I and World War II, which also helped to gather the Jews together so they could come back. Amazing to me. Isaiah 11 tells us about the reuniting and the restoration. It says that there'll be a, a, an ensign of the nations. And look down at verse 13. Watch the, the reuniting. The envy also of Ephraim. If you're not for sure what Ephraim is, you can write down ten tribes. That's what Ephraim is referring to. The ten tribes that would go by the name of Israel or also Ephraim. Ephraim was one of the sons of Joseph when he was in Egypt. Uh, half-tribes, and Manasseh and Ephraim, and the Bible in these um, um, prophetic uh, major prophets uses that term to describe the ten tribes of Israel. It says, The envy of Ephraim shall depart, the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Watch this. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. In other words, we're bringing back the united tribes of Israel. That's what the Bible says would happen 2,700 years before it happened. I don't know how we can't get excited about the Bible you hold in your hand when you think about what God did in the way He did it. Can you, we, we've still got north and south separated, and we've only had a civil war a couple hundred years ago. Talk about uh, uh, the, the, the flags and, and some of those things, and I know that we're the United States of America, but there's still some talk about now, if you come from the south or come from the north, not with Israel when they return. The Bible says the envy will be gone between those two divided parts of Israel. Judah being the two tribes, Judah and Benjamin. Ephraim being the ten tribes. I'm not even going to try to name them all off the top of my head. But uh, uh, you put them together and he says they're going to be Israel. When they're restored, they'll be reunited. Amazing. And then look at the rejoicing. There's some details, but at the end of chapter 11, details of the last few verses I'm going to skip over. But look at chapter 12, <clears throat> the rejoicing. Look what verse 1 says. And in that day, talking about the same day when Israel's restored, reunited. And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee, though thou wast angry with me. Thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. How, what other, how else could you rejoice unless the anger that the Lord had is removed from us? Well, think about your own salvation. I, I, I can come pray to God as my heavenly Father now, instead as my heavenly judge. Now, he's going to be my judge, but it's a lot better when it's a family member on the, on the courtroom uh, 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 authority. When you, it's I always say it's, it's better that you know who you know than what you know, right? The God that's on the throne is my heavenly Father. I don't expect Him to, to bypass His justice, but I sure am thankful that He provided mercy through Jesus Christ. I can rejoice because His anger has been satisfied. The wrath of God has been met by the Lord Jesus Christ. And here this nation of Israel, they can say in that day, that the anger of God is turned away. Look at verse 2. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. 
Can we just look at those words for a minute? And friend, think about your own personal life to apply uh, this, these thoughts with. Israel was rejoicing because God's anger was satisfied. They had salvation in God, and then they had strength in God as well. If you know you're saved tonight, would you say amen? amen. Is that where you get your strength from? Or are you drawing strength for some other source? Boy, I know that we can have some comfort and we can have some stability with things in life, uh, uh, whatever the convenience is. We're talking about air conditioning and heating. I'll, I'll say amen to air conditioning. I, I'm glad the Richwood Fair was this week and not next week. I'll tell you that right now. But I, I hope my strength is drawn from God, not just in some circumstances of life that I think I've kind of got a handle on. Because if, if you're like any other human, you think you've got a handle on until you get one new report from a doctor or you get one phone call from a family member, or you get one uh, uh, notice from a, a whatever source. Hey, our, our stability, if it's not in Christ, is very volatile at the best. But they're satisfied. Uh, the anger of God was satisfied. Their salvation, their strength. Then look at verse number two. And my song. Boy, what a blessing. When you've got a song in your heart. Now, some of you don't need to have a song in your lips. I've heard you before. I know who you are. I'm just teasing. But you ought to have a song in your heart. There ought to be a song that just plays in your heart. I walked, uh, met, met somebody, and I was whistling. They said, oh, you got a song in your mind, don't you? I'm like, how can you not when you've got a four-year-old who watches uh, a few cartoons every once in a while? But I, I always have a song. I, something that I hear or it just sparks in it. And, boy, I'll be whistling it or, or uh, humming it, and, and uh, uh, they're out of, we, why, why do you sing? I sing because I'm happy. Yeah. I sing because I'm free. Yeah. Uh, that's the, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Uh, whether, whether or not you can carry a tune in a bucket, you ought to have a tune in your heart. Yeah. And they had that song as they were rejoicing. Salvation, strength, song. And then look at verse number two, or verse number three. <clears throat> Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. Isn't that just a picture of Jesus as well? He told that woman at the well, uh, you, you, you're drinking water, but I've got water that you'll never thirst again from. Give me that water. Where is it at? It'll be the well of springy life and it'll come from inside of you when you get the Lord. Oh, that well of water that flows constantly. I've mentioned this a couple times, but I know the water tables are very different between counties, especially Champaign and Union. Sorry about your luck, Union County. We got good water down where I'm from. In fact, my sub pump runs about nine months out of the year. Uh, it just runs right out to the next spot, but it keeps running. The, the springs of, of uh, that area around Mechanicsburg and uh, all, constant water. I believe my well is about 50 foot deep at the most. Don't get jealous. There's other problems in Champaign County, but... Uh, uh, there's water, and it just constantly flows. <clears throat> Boy, I hope salvation constantly flows from this well. Amen. I hope that in, in my life, there'll be enough water of salvation that can just splash over a few people around me. Amen. I hope that you'll be able to have that same testimony, that somebody will say, what song are you singing? What are you humming? Boy, Sunday night was a good one. Let's just praise the Lord. Let's just praise up from the grave. He arose. Oh, man, the... The uh, brass section is about ready to blow me off the platform on that chorus, man. You, you get something in your heart, and it will overflow, and others will see it. And that's what you see in this illustration. They're rejoicing that they're going to be reunited, going to be restored. The Bible says the joy will flow like water, of well, uh, water out of the well. And look at verse 4. And in that day shall you say, praise the Lord, call upon His name, declare His doings among the people, make mention that His name is exalted. Oh, when you get the water, you need to share the water. There's enough to give to other people. And then it'll be seen in all the earth. Sing unto the Lord, verse 5 says, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. When the waters flow and it's easy to share and, and show it to others. Uh, I know that there's um, uh, some humanitarian uh, causes that have been digging wells and, and some missionaries have attached themselves with that great cause and 
And uh, I don't know all the scenario of every place, but buddy, when there's fresh water flowing, that's clean water, it makes a difference for all the inhabitants of that region. It's why that uh, early days of our, of our nation, they dwelled around the rivers. Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, uh, they're around water. That's what you find. The, these major, major cities had access to waterways and even on the ports uh, of the settlements of our country. But boy, when we've got access <coughs> to the greatest water that's ever flown, it should draw some people to come settle around it. Oh, I hope that, that um, as Brother Tom Wagner said, you can't be unseen at that property where you're at. There's, there's no way people can't see you in Marysville. I'm like, we, we are unhideable now. We uh, are up on a hill and, and, and the name. And boy, I appreciate the folks work on the sign and the flowers and all this stuff. There's, there's a, a, a great, great avenue for people to uh, check out what's going on. Brother Will was talking to a waitress last week that got saved. And she said, I know your church. It's always full. That's what she said. The parking lot's always full. Well, it is especially lunchtime in Culver's during the week as well. Amen. But um, uh, yeah, you do see some cars out there, whether they're getting uh, soul food or, or uh, sandwiches um, or knocking down or yellow post in the parking lot. Amen. But hey, people ought to know that there's water here. Even though we can't help everyone that calls for benevolence, you know what? Almost every call that comes into the church office that needs some help. Hey, so and so told me to call you. You'd probably help me. I don't know if that's every place, and, and, and I, we don't get to help every single cause and call. If you uh, knew the benevolent fund uh, numbers, uh, well, I, I know that some people get saved, so amen, so it's worth it. But I, I just know that, that word gets around where water flows. Somebody said if you tell somebody else how to get saved, you're just one beggar telling another beggar where to find the bread. And maybe you're just one thirsty sinner who tells another thirsty soul, hey, here's where I found the water. Oh, the water was flowing. It was seen in all the earth. And they were singing about it. And look at verse 6. It's not enough just to sing. What's verse 6 say? Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. I, I get on my kids for their shouting. And then I think, Maybe God's preparing them to shout something else. I hope so, a little bit. But why do they get shout? Why, why do my little ones shout? Because they get emotional. That's why they get shouting. One of them gets upset at the other one. Boy, they let out a beller. Dad! Ah! And you know something's going on because their, their voice amplifies it. Man, I don't think that I need to yell and shout out in the street, but I should have that emotion and compassion that would compel me to open my mouth and share what Jesus has done. Amen? Yeah. When's the last time you shared with someone what Jesus did in your life? Oh, preacher, you just had the fair. I know. And there's more people that need to hear about it tomorrow. Yeah. Everyone you come in contact with, I hope that you have an overflow like Israel did when they would be restored. They were reunited. They are rejoicing for what God has done. And man... If only, if only people could know and tell what's happened in your life. Uh, there, there's a lot of good advertisers in the world, but Christians oftentimes aren't those people. you got a great testimony. you got a great story how God restored your marriage, how God uh, renewed a fellowship with a, with a family member, how God rescued you from the depravity of your own self, if not the depth of some hole that you were in because of your sin. Can somebody say amen? Yeah. Boy, those are great stories. We love to watch those stories on some show or, or some documentary. And you've got it. You've got that story. Of how God restored you and reunited your spirit and soul that you're now a whole person and you can tell someone else who did it and how it happened. Amen. Oh, I hope that, that we'll be able to be an enzyme or an emblem for other people to seek and to find that rest that we have experienced. Verse 10, if you'll read it one more time. In that day shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people, 
To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. Not all the time do sinners just come seeking the Lord. Sometimes they seek a wheel to spin to get something free. Sometimes they might come for a, a free meal that they're, they've heard about. Sometimes they may come because something's going on from someone they love. I was so glad that uh, the little, little girl and the little boy that got baptized, that, that not little boy now, 15-year-old boy, was in our Wednesday night kids program. And the only reason he came was because his aunt was teaching and she got him to come to be in her class for about a year and a half. And she went and got him every Wednesday, brought him to church, brought him in, was a part of their class. This has been 10 years ago, eight, eight nine years ago. And today he got up there and he said, I love your church. That's what he told me last week. He said, I love this place. I learn, I get challenged, and I need to get baptized. Amen. Same little fellow I remember seeing lining up for the Funny Money store on a Wednesday night after he'd said a few verses and had a few attendances together. And the little girl that got baptized, I remember dedicating her when she was a baby in front of the church. We commit ourselves to help raise and help teach this little girl to get to know Jesus. And she was a little afraid of the water, but she said, I told my brother, if he gets baptized, I'm ready. I'm going to get baptized with him because I know I'm saved. She got mad as she drove up the highway and noticed the signs on the bypass that say where all the restaurants and all the hotels are on the exit. She says, why aren't our church sign on that highway sign? They need to have a sign telling everybody where the churches are. They pull off the highway. Praise the Lord, the little spitfire. I, I think it's good, too. That's what she told her mom. She said, why isn't our church on that sign for the exit? We, we need people to know where we're at. Oh, you never know what God's going to do. But I, I know why they come. Because there's some water of life. And there's some rest for a soul. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Lord, I thank you for just the reason we gather each time. And it's because of the Lord Jesus. I pray that we, you'd fill us with your spirit. Fuel us with your scripture. <clears throat> and then... Remind us that we can bring fruit for the Savior. Lord, would you use us this week? Oh, it's a great week to tell someone about Jesus. It's a great day to remind someone about the real rest for your soul tomorrow. Oh God, I pray for boldness, and I pray for a better tomorrow with more that would know you and fear you and find you as their Lord and Savior. Lord, pray that you'd prepare the the work that we are about to take part in, that you'd bless the effort, you'd multiply the, the seed of the Word of God, and then it would go out and to share and to show somebody else how to get saved. Oh God, you're so good to us. Thank you for restoring my soul. Thank you for renewing the right spirit within me. And Lord, thank you for removing your anger because of my sin through Jesus Christ. It's a blessing what you took, and what you stood up, to be trampled under and to be um, bruised and beaten for my cause and my case. God, I praise your name publicly, and I pray that everyone that I come in contact would know that it's you that's made the difference in my life. God, would you use this invitation? The piano begins to play. Maybe you need to renew.